My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number eight. Day, day 8 and we are on page number 153. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page number 153. The very first problem that you see on the book on the page there, number 48, is where we're going to pick up from. Let's take a look at it. The problem as you can see is already on the blackboard. It says the quotient when a certain number is divided by 2 third is 9 half. 9 halves. What's the number? One more time. The quotient when a certain number is divided by two thirds is nine half. What's the number? Let's first understand. Let's first understand the terminology through an example, a simple example. For example, here, if you were to divide, say, for example, seventeen. Let's divide seventeen by five. Let's divide seventeen by five, shall we? And we know seventeen has three fives. Three fives are fifteen. After we take away 15 from the 17, we have a remainder of 2. There you go. That's what it's called. We just said it. 2 is the remainder. That's the easy part. Everybody knows that 2 is the remainder. What is 3 called? The result of the division. When we divide 17 by 5, when we divide 17 by 5, we get a 3. What is the 3 called? The result of the division. This is what is known as quotient. What is 5 called? Is there a, is there a terminology to, to describe the number by which we are dividing something? The answer is yes. The number by which we divide another number, say for example we are dividing 17 by 5, the number by which we divide some other number, that number is called a divisor. And the number that is being divided, the number that is being divided, in this case 17, is called dividend. Why are we making such fuss about it? Because we have to know these terminologies because they use these terminology, terminologies in the exam all the time. So if they're talking about divisor or a dividend or a remainder or a quotient, we must understand what that means. So what's the quotient? All right, as you can see, quotient is very straightforward. Quotient, quotient is simply, is simply the result of division is simply the result of division for example for example if you will divide 35 by 5 how many 5 does 35 have the answer of course is 7 answer of course is 7 the result of the division is called the quotient do you understand remainder here is 0 the number by which we divide divisor here is 5 the dividend is 35 so let's carry on then. Now that we understand the terminology, let's see what we can do. Before we go, go before we go any further, let's let's you know, let's write it down like this one: dividend, dividend. In this case, is 17. Dividend divided by divisor equals the quotient. That's what that's what it is. For example, for example, 35 divided by 5 is equal to 7. 7, 7 is the 7, the result, the 7, the result of division is called the quotient. Dividend is the number that is being divided. Divisor is the number by which we are dividing the quantity. Enough said. So what we are going to do here is, here is what we are going to do. What we are going to do here is, we are going to put in something, something simple here and see how it, see how it works. Okay? It says, the, 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 the quotient when a certain number, let's call this certain number, let's call this certain number x. Instead of calling it a certain number, we're just going to call it x. So now the, now the problem reads, the quotient when x, when x is divided by, when x is divided by 5, let's replace, let's replace this 2 third by 5. When x is divided by 5, when x is divided by 5, the quotient 
the quotient when x is divided by 5 is, let's say, 7. One more time. So now the problem reads, now the problem reads, the quotient, in other words, the result of the division, result of the division. The result of the division, when we divide certain number x, when a certain number x is divided by 5, that result is 7. That's what this says. That's what this says. The result of the division, in other words, the quotient, when x is divided by 5, is 7. You see that? When x is divided by 5, the result is 7. Do you understand? So all we have to do now, all we have to do is, we don't have 5. We don't have 5, we have 2 thirds. So let's replace it. We're not dividing, we're not dividing certain number x, we're not dividing certain number x by 5. We are told to divide this number by 2 thirds. And we are told that when we divide this number x by 2 thirds, the result is going to be 9 halves. The quotient is going to be 9 halves. When certain number x is divided by 2 thirds, the result, the quotient is 9 halves. So we're going to divide this x by 2 thirds. And we, and we are told that when we do that, the result is going to be 9 halves. The result is going to be 9 halves. And that's what it is. If, if you understand that part, the rest is very easy. The rest is very straightforward. I'm going to put it a little bit higher so we have a little bit more room. Let's erase this part. So one more time. When x is divided by 2 thirds, when x is divided by 2 thirds, the result we are told is 9 halves. How do we solve for x? It's very straightforward. Just cross multiply. So this implies, this implies that x must equal 9 halves times 2 thirds. Just cross multiply. For example, if x over 3 is equal to 15, then x must be 15 times 3. That's all it is. The 2's are going to cancel out, and we divide 9 by 3, and the answer is 3. The x equals 3. x equals 3. The answer to this problem is, the quantity, the certain number that we're looking for, the unknown quantity, equals 3. And the answer is C. The answer is C. All right. Enough said. Let's move on to the next problem. It's a very simple problem, if you understand the terminology, if you understand what they're talking about. Because otherwise, if we don't, then sometimes the language gets to be too much. And it is by design. It is by design. It's not, it's not by accident. It is by design that they phrase the whole thing the way they do. Number 49. In number 49 it says, if a sphere with radius r is inscribed in a cube with edge of length e. What's the relationship between? I'm not going to write the rest of it. You can read the problem yourself in the, in the book. It says, which of the following expressions, which of the following expressions manifests, which of the following expression shows the relationship between these two quantity, the radius r and the length of the edge e. Which of the following quantity among the five that I give you shows us the relationship between r and e. Let's, let's take a look at it, shall we? Again, Again, the very first thing we need to do is to make sure that we understand the language, the terminologies. So let's begin with this. First thing first, what's a sphere? What's a sphere? The answer is a sphere is simply a, a three-dimensional, a sphere is simply a three-dimensional square. A three-dimensional square is called a sphere. Oh no, sorry. A sphere is a three-dimensional circle. Three-dimensional circle. What's a cube? A cube is a three-dimensional square. A cube is a three-dimensional square. So let's let's put let's let's show the three-dimensional square. So here's our square. Here's our square. 
this is two dimensional. This. Two dimensional is just a square, but every side, because it's a square, all four sides are equal. All four sides are equal. This is two dimensional, it's a square. If you add one more dimension to it, if you were to add one more dimension to it, voila, now we have a now we have a cube. It's, why is it a cube? It's a cube because all of these sides are equal. All six sides are equal. The length, the width, and and the depth, they are all equal to each other. Do you understand? It's a cube. If they were not all equal to each other, if they were not equal to each other, something like this, for example, something like this here, this is not a cube. This is a cube where all sides are equal. Cube is a three dimensional square. What is this thing? This is a three dimensional rectangle. As you can see, this is a rectangle. This is a rectangle. The, the, this length and width are not the same. A three dimensional rectangle is called simply a rectangular box. Rectangular box. So when they're talking about rectangular box, obviously it's a rectangle with the three dimensions. A cube is simply a three dimensional square. The sphere is simply a three dimensional circle. So what's going on here? Three dimensional circle would be obviously a ball. Any, any kind of ball that you have, a bowling ball or baseball, any kind of ball, a ball is a three dimensional circle. It's a sphere. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop it inside. We're going to drop the sphere inside the box such that it fits perfectly, such that it fits inside this box perfectly. That's what it means to be inscribed. Inscribed means it's going to touch the outer walls at just one point, like this. And we are told that the length of the edge is E. This length right here, this length we are told, the length of this edge is E. Which is where which is where things get confusing, again by design, by purpose, because usually, traditionally, conventionally, the orthodox way, the conventional way, the traditional way, is to symbolize this length by letter L, which means, which obviously is more logical. The length of the cube, length with the letter L. Why use E? Why you see? Because E, E in mathematics has a very special meaning. And for only for those of you, my next sentence is only for those of you who are going to understand it. And if you don't understand what I just said, then just ignore it. You, for those of you who know, you know that letter E actually in mathematics stands in most of the cases for the base of the natural log. Here, E is not the base of the natural log. It, is simply, represent, it simply represents the length of the, length of the cube. Instead of using letter L, they use E. But what is this length from here to here? As you can clearly see, because, because this sphere is inscribed inside it, because we drop this ball inside it, that E is nothing more than the diameter of this guy. So the diameter of the sphere, diameter of the sphere is equal to the length of the length of the cube, length of length of the edge. These are called edges. It, and how much is the diameter of a sphere? Well, diameter of a sphere from here to here, from this distance right here, is the radius. And diameter is simply two times the radius. Two radii from this is this is from here to here is one radius. This is another, uh, here is another uh, radius. Two radii make a diameter. So di two times radius must equal the length of the edge, which is usually represented with letter L. But we can use letter L because they insist. Because they really want to be pen in the derriere, they insist that we use letter E. So so be it. Don't make a fuss about it. That's it, we are done. Let's solve for R. How do we solve for R? Divide both sides by 2. R equals E over 2. And that's all it is. That's all it was. All that's fuss about that part. The answer would be A. The answer would be A. Let's do number 50, shall we? A lot of the time these questions are a lot of the time these questions are much simpler than what meets the eye at first. You just have to stay calm and just analyze it calmly, collectively, rationally. Do you understand? And you'll be fine. In number 50 it says price of gasoline, price of gasoline goes from goes from dollar sixty five per gallon to dollar eighty two per gallon. 
Let's, before we do any work at all, let's figure out what the change is. So from dollar, it goes from dollar sixty-five to dollar eighty-two. From dollar sixty-five to dollar eighty-two. 12 minus 5, 12 minus 7 would be 5, and 7 minus 6 would be 1. So it looks like it looks like the price just went up by 15 cents per gallon. Okay, keep that in mind. 15. That this indicates from dollar 65 to dollar 82 is an increase of 15 cents per gallon. Let's see what the question is asking. It says last week. Last week uh, we spent. Twenty-six dollars and forty cents. How much more? He says. How much more? This is the important part. They're not asking how much. They're not asking how much I'm going to spend this week as a result of the increase in price of the gasoline to dollar eighty-two. They're not asking how much I'm going to spend this week. They're asking how much more I'm going to spend. In other words, the difference between what I would have spent yes, what I did spend last week, and what I will spend now. Now that the price has gone up, how much more do I need to spend? Do I need to pay to buy the same amount of gasoline? How much more do I need to buy if I wanted to buy the same amount of gasoline? Apparently, I, I go there and I fill up a certain amount every week because that's what my tank holds in my car and I have a routine and I always do that. Last week I spent $26, $26.40. $26 How much more am I going to spend this week now that I know that the price has gone up by $16, 16 cents, uh, 15, 15 cents rather. But the very first thing we need to figure out is how many gallons I bought last week. Let's find out how many gallons, how many gallons did I buy last week when the price was $1.65. Well, the price was $1.65. Let's leave it in cents. Don't, don't put a decimal there. And how much did you spend? You spent $26.40. Let's put the entire thing in cents. $2,640. So far, so good. Let's reduce it. Let's see what we can do. Okay, let's begin the story. Let's begin the show, shall we? As you can see, this ends in a 0, which means it's a multiple of 5. This ends in a 5. That's a multiple of 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does, fif how many five does 16 have? 16 has 3 fives. 3 fives are 15. After we take away 15 from the 16, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15. And that 15 will also have 3 fives. In other words, 165 is made up of 33 fives. Since we divided the bottom by 5, we must divide the top by 5. Let's, let's begin, shall we? How many fives does 2 have? 2 has no fives. 2 has no five. 2 is too puny to have any fives. So what does it do? Well, he goes to his next door neighbor and says, why don't you join me? I can't take on five by myself, but if we join together, we can, we can take care of that guy, no problem. How many, so now it becomes 26. How many five does 26 have? 26 has five, 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 the 25. Five, five, the 25. After we take away 25 from the 26, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? That one goes and joins the four and becomes a 14. How many five does 14 have? 14 has two fives. Two fives are 10. After we take away 10 from the 14, we have a remainder of 4. What happens to that 4? Four? 4 goes and joins the 8 and becomes a 40. And how many fives does 40 have? 40 has 8 fives. The point is that you must follow your logic, your work. You must have concentration. Concentration is what is required. As I speak to you and as I look at the camera, it doesn't mean, it doesn't allow me that, would get, that cannot give me an excuse for my concentration to break, for my concentration to lapse. Even though I'm going back and forth and looking at you as I'm speaking, it has to follow. It has, the concentration has to be there. Otherwise, it won't work. Do you understand? Let's carry on, shall we? The next thing we see again here, I see 33. Well, since we see 33, we know 33, we know 33 is simply a product of two prime numbers, 3 and 11. So there is not much we can do about it, not much we can do with it, which means I think either we can divide the top number by 3 or top number by 11. Either way we can do it. Question is, is, is this top number 528 divisible by 3? How do we know? How do we know if, we know if a number is divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3 
if the sum of his digit 5 plus 2 plus 8 528 is made up of 5 and a 2 and 8 if we take the sum 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 if we take the sum of the digits 5 plus 2 is 7 7 plus 8 is 15 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3 then we know the number itself is divisible by 3 so since the sum of the digits here is 15 we can safely conclude that 528 is a multiple of 3 and so is 33 so let's divide top and bottom by 3 shall we let's get the show going how many 3's does 3 have 3 has 1 3 how many 3's does 3 have 3 has 1 3 in other words 33 divided by 3 is 11 big, big news eh how many 3's does 5 have I'm going to speak up some speed here as I speak just follow me as I, as I speak follow the speech okay see if you can do it with me how many 3's does 5 have 5 has 1 3 so after we take away 3 from the 5 we have a remainder of 2 what happens to the 2 2 goes and joins the 2 becomes 22 22 has 7 3 7 3 is a 21 after we take away 21 from 22 we have a remainder of 1 what happens to that 1 1 goes and joins the 18 and 18 has 6 3's voila let's divide top and bottom by 11 see what happens how many 11 does 1 have how many 11 does 1 have? 1 has no 11. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins a 7 becomes a 17. How many 11s does 17 have? 17 has 1 11. After we take away 11 from the 17, we have a remainder of 6. What happens to that 6? 6 goes and joins this 6 and becomes a 16. That becomes a 66. And 66 has 6 11. Since we just divided the top by 11, we must divide the bottom by 11. Voila, we are all done. What do we conclude? We conclude we concluded that we must have purchased 16 gallons of ga 16 gallons last week and since the price has gone up 16 gallons since the price has gone up by 17 cents per gallon as you can see gallons are going to cancel out and when we multiply 16 by 17 we're going to get a cent and we're going to convert the cent to dollar this is how much more we're going to pay 16 times 17 how much is 16 times 17 do you know 16 times 17. Well, if you don't know, we're going to have to do it out. Let's do it on the top here. We shouldn't have to do it out. First, we're going to do it out on the top. And then I'm going to explain to you why we shouldn't have had to do it out. First, we're going to multiply it out 16 times 17. And then I'm going to explain to you why we shouldn't have had to do it. Because if you have to sit there in the exam and multiply 16 times 17 to see what it's equal to, that is not a good news. And I'll tell you why why it is not a good news in a second. Let's do it. 16 times 17. 7, 6 is 42. 2, carry 4. 7 plus 4 is 11. You hold the unit digit. 1 times 16 is going to be 16. And we get 2, 7, and 2. 2, 7, and 2. In other words, we're going to spend $2.72 more. How much more are we going to spend this week? The answer is $2.72. $2.72 would be answer choice D, as in David. Now, why did I tell you that this is something you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have had to do in the exam? If I see somebody, if you're walking in the room in there, if you're walking around in the classroom where the people are taking exam and you see somebody actually on a scratch paper doing our 16 times 17, that is actually a very poor sign. That means, that tells me that that person has not done proper preparation. Because if that person had done proper preparation, that that person should have known the squares. You must know your squares. You must, you must know your squares. In the search box, in the search box, type this in. I'm going to type, I want you to type in just this. Know your squares. When you type it in, you're going to come across a video which is going to say, T's day two. Don't worry about what T is this. Don't worry about it. It's, it's not your concern. But that's what's going to pop up. Watch that video and learn your squares 1 through 20. You must know your squares by heart 1 through 20 as a preparation. And if we did know our squares, if we did not know our squares, this is what we would have done. We know we want to find 16 times 17. But we know, we know that 16 square is 256. In other words, 16 16s are 256. Well, we don't have 16 16s, we have 17 16s. This is 16 16s. We don't have 16 16s, we have 17 16s. So just add one more 16 to it. Just add one more 16 to it, you get a 12, carry one, you get a 7 and a 2, voila, you see? 
We shouldn't have had to do this thing. We should not have had to do this thing. Anyway, the bottom line is the answer is $2.72. How much more are we going to pay this week? How much more are we going to pay this week? The answer is $2.72. Again, no, no, you squares. Or you can simply, in this video, we'll chop up, pop up T's. In case you're dying to find out what T's is, T's is an exam, just like the GMAT that you're preparing for. GMAT stands for Graduate Management Admission Test, just like that. T's stands for Test of Essential Academic Skills. Test of Essential Academic Skills is one of the tests that I uh, provide tutoring for. I provide private tutoring, one-to-one -one tutoring, on uh, via Skype, online for GRE, GMAT, SAT, SCT, STEES, HESI, and several other exams. This is one of those exams. And if you're interested in hiring me to help you get a better score on the GMAT, that's exactly why this phone number is here, call me at my number here, 1-800-808-PREP, or send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to do what I can to help you get a better score. Let's move on to number, number 51. Number 51. Number 51 says that here's the monthly rate. They're giving us monthly rate, monthly rate for the phone company, and this is what the stipulation is. It says that if we have a contract, this is only with the contract. If you have, if you sign a contract with them, if you sign a contract with them, then you can use up to up to 75 units. Whatever the 75 units might be, it might be up to 75 text messages or 75 megabytes or whatever, however they define units. Up to 75 units, if you, if you sign a monthly contract, then you will pay 20% less, 20% less than the standard rate, the standard rate of $10. And above, above 75, over 75 units, if you go over 75 units, you will pay 0 .0, 0 $0.065 per unit. The question simply is, how much am I going to end up paying for 95 units? How much for 95 units? How much for 95 units? Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, we know up to 75 units, and this is with the contract, you understand? The problem tells you that it's with the contract. Up to 75 units, up to 75 units is very simple. Up to 75 units, ordinarily 75 units apparently would have been $10, but because I have a contract, I will pay 20% less. Ordinarily, if I didn't have a contract, if I didn't have a contract, 75 units would have cost me $10. But because I have a contract, I get 20% less, 20% less of 20% of $10 is $2, so up to $75, up, up to 75 units will pay $8. We are not using 75 units, we are using 95 units. So we have to go 20 more units. 20 more units, the next 20 units, the next 20 units, how much, will I, how much are we going to pay? Oh, it's right here. 0 0.065 times 20. We know we know 0 0.065 times 10, we simply move the decimal, we simply move the decimal and it will become 0 0.65, 0 0.65, and another 10, and if you were to multiply, if you were to multiply this thing by 2, to make it 20, it will just be times 2. In other words, in other words, 10 units cost 65 cents, if 10 units cost 65 cents, 20 units would cost 65 times 2 or $1.30. Dollar thirty. So how many? How much altogether? For eight dollars for the first seventy-five units, dollar thirty for the next next twenty units. Altogether, we're going to end up paying nine dollars and thirty cents. Nine dollars and thirty cents to to use ninety-five units. However, you define units, and that's answer choice A. Let's move on to fifty-two, shall we? I need a quick break. Number 52. 
number 52 says we are given two equations the first one is this 2x plus 7 rather 2x plus y 2x plus y equals 7 the next equation that they give us is 2x plus 2y or rather x plus 2y equals 5 and the question simply is how much is this quantity x plus y divided by 3 how much is it? x plus y divided by 3 let's find out shall we well if we add the two equations let's add the two equations see what we get if we add the two equations we get 2x plus x we get 3x y plus 2y we get 3y equals 7 plus 5 which is 12 3 is a multiple of 3 12 is a multiple of 3 let's divide the entire equation by 3 if we divide the entire equation by 3 we get x plus y equals 4 but we don't want to find out how much is x plus y we want to find out how much is x plus y over 3 if you want to figure out what, how much is x plus y over 3 let's just divide both sides by 3 voila we're done let's erase this thing from the last question and let's bring this equal sign a little bit lower so it lines up properly so it looks nice voila all done one more time how do we do it we we'll simply add up the two equations simply add up the two equations when, you, when, we add it, when we add up the two equations we get 2x plus x is equal to 3x y plus 2y is equal to 3y so 3x plus 3y equals 12 if we divide both sides by 3 we get x plus y equals to 4 but we don't want x plus y we want x plus y divided by 3 so then divide again by 3 in other words we are dividing this equation that you see here entire equation 3 by 3 twice first time we divide the entire equation by 3 to remove this 3 and that 3 so that we have x and y and then we divide the entire equation again by 3 one more time to get x plus y over 3 and it gives us 4 thirds and that's answer choice 4 thirds would be answer choice B answer choice B let's move on then very last problem number, number 52 on the page or rather number 53 on the page this was number 52 this let's move on to 53 in 53 we are told that x equals 4y but that's not how they phrase it it says but I'm, I'm being lazy I'm not going to put everything on the blackboard it says city x has a population four times that of city y city x has a population four times that of city y. In other words, city x has quadrupled the amount of population that city y has, which I'm writing that here, here is x equals 4y. They're going to tell us that city y apparently has two times the population of city z. Let's see how they phrase it. Okay, so this is how it goes. It says city x has a population four times great, four times as great as city y which has a population twice as great as city z in other words x equals 4y and y equals 2 times z understand what is the question the question simply is question simply is what's the ratio what is the ratio of of x to z to x to z well let's find out shall we let's find out we want the ratio of x to z well, x we know is 4y, it's right there, x equals 4y, so let's substitute here 4y, and z we know is, well, how much is it here, this is the tricky part, if y equals 2z, if, if y equals 2z, right here, y equals 2z, we divide both sides by 2, I shouldn't have to do this baby stuff, 2 is going to go away, and z, z equals y over 2, which makes perfect sense, of course, which makes perfect sense, because if y is 2 times z then z must be half of y as I said this is two baby stuff I shouldn't have it I shouldn't have shouldn't have had to do it so z equals y over 2 let's put it here y over 2 and how do we how do we divide a quantity how do we divide a numerator by a fraction that's very straightforward we take our numerator we take our numerator which is 4y we take our numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator so y over 2 becomes 2 over y what happens next? Well, we see y on the top, we see y on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by y. When we divide top and bottom by y, y drops out and the answer is 8. 8 to 1. 8 to 1. The answer is 8 to 1. 
You understand? That's all. A to 1 would be answer choice E. Pay attention. The answer is not A. A is the reciprocal of the correct answer. Answer, in, answer choice A is the reciprocal of the correct answer. Answer is not 1 to 8. 8 is on the top here. You can see 8 and on the bottom we have 1. 8 to 1 is the answer. The answer is E. So that was one way of doing this thing. There is however another way you could have done the problem. Another way would be just do it here. And there would, would have been something like this. Okay, watch what happens. Watch what happens. We have x to y to z. Okay, follow. Pay attention. We know x is equal to 4 times y. x is equal to 4 times y. In other words, if y is 1, if y is 1, x would have to be 4. That's what this means. When you say that x equals 4 times y, which means when y is 1, x would have to be 4, which makes perfect sense if you put in 1 equal, if you put in y, 1 for y, 4 times 1 is 4, x equals 4. Then we go on to, and then they go on to tell you that y equals 2 times z. This equation tells us, this equation tells us that when z is equal to 1, when z is equal to 1, y would have to be 2. Are you with me? That's what that means. But we have a y equal to 2 here and y equal to 1 here. We can't have a 1 here and 2 here. We have to either make this into, convert this 2 into a 1 and make that into a half or leave this 2 alone and convert and, and make that into a 2. So let's do that. Let's do that. So watch what happens. We're going to convert, let's do it in a red pen. We're going to multiply this by 2. For Christ's sake. You know, these markers are brand new. I went through this thing the other day. I just opened the second one also. Let's do it with blue. So we want to convert this one into a two because that's what we have here. So let's multiply this by two. And since we multiply this quantity by two, we must multiply this quantity by two. And there is your answer. There is our answer. What's the ratio? What's the ratio of x to z? The ratio is 8 to 1. Eight. So what we boil, what boils down to is this. 8 to 2 to 1. What's, what's, what, what's the ratio of x to y to z? What's the ratio of x to y to z? The ratio of x to y to z is 8 to 2 to 1. But they're not asking for the ratio of x to y to z. They're simply asking us the ratio of x to z. The ratio of x to z, x to z is 8 to 1. Can you see that? Which is exactly what we have here, 8 to 1. That was the end of it. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll pick up from next page. Page number 154 from problem number 54. Oh, really? What oh, do you know? Alright? Bye now.